In Jesus name we pray. Our Father we thank you for our gathering together at the table of the Lord to eat the spiritual bread even this night. We bless your name for bringing us together for such a feast on the world. We are praying that you will bless everyone of here to everyone of us here today in Jesus' name. Baba Watin Belon, I do call our own in Tiamu Awasi B, Tabi Lulua, Latiwa Jacarati, me. I feel go for Rukoni, for as in Lai Lay Tiamu Awaii, I want bad rakwe, Nino Pade Kabu, Lukuku, and your Rukoji. We're praying that your word will mix with faith in every heart. And bad rakwe, or on your dark or my bad block, and the word will do good in every life in Jesus' name. Or on now, you're sure you're in your Lukuku, and your Rukoji. We're asking, O Lord, that you help us in our hearts to receive your word. So that the good that your word ought to do in every life, it will do it without hindrance in Jesus' name. Transform us through this word. And prepare us to enter the heavenly promised land. In Jesus' name we pray. Ni Oruko Jesu ni Agbadura. We come for a Bible study today and we thank the Lord for the interest and the zeal we have in wanting to know what does the Word of God teach. Awasi eko bibe de wani asalei. As if you are for a long phone, if a team be lock and while Latima on your long coni, we come to one of the most important passages in the word of God. I was your recon, so that be any proper as a pataki, you learn in or alone. It contains the promise of God for the believer. Only sequeli, your long phone, one in bag. It looks behind, it looks forward, and it encourages the present congregation, the present people of God to march on so that we can end into the promised rest. Oh, Boju Way, Bell, Boju, or Joy Waju, or one more, and more lock on the phone, and when you jot, you are low all over by you. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 4 from verse 1 to verse 11. As you look at this passage, you will see that there are two words that come up often and often. And first is the word rest. If you look at verse 1, let us therefore fear lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest. If you look at verse 3, for we which have believed do enter into rest. Looking at verse 4, we were saying, for you speak in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest. Nitori oti soni bi kan niti ojo keje bayi pe Olorun si si mi in verse 5 and in this place again if they shall enter into my rest ni ese ikarun ati ni iye we pe won ki yo wo inu isin mi mi and then he goes on to verse 8 o te si waju ni ese ikejo for it jesus meaning joshua had given them rest Nitori ibase kwe josu ati fun wani isi mi In verse 9, there remained therefore a rest to the people of God Ni ese ike san, nitori na isi mi kaku fun awe ni yon lor In verse 10, for he that is entered into his rest Ni ese ike wa, nitori kwe eniti obabo sinu isi mi re Verse 11, let us labor therefore to enter into that rest Ni ese ike kan la 
you will see that the passage is talking about rest. And as I told you, he looked at the children of Israel in the past, and he is looking at the promise of God for the people of God in the future. And he's talking about rest. And yet he's talking about endeavoring to enter in. If you look at all these verses again, you will see that he uses the word enter very many times. And he uses the word in an active sense, not in a passive sense. That means you need to make an effort, you need to labor, you need to do something and actively enter into the rest of God. It's not talking of something passive, like for example, entering into the new year. Whether you make an effort or not, once you are still alive, the new year will come and will say that everybody has entered into the new year. No effort, no action, no prayer, no endeavor, no labor. We all enter into the new year. That's passive. It's talking of something active. You labor. You endeavor, you believe, you strive, you do something, you are active to enter into his rest. Let's see how he uses the word enter entering. In, in verse 1, let us therefore fear, lest the promise being left us of Entering into his rest, any of you shall seem to come short of it. There is an active thing you need to do. There is something you need to endeavor to do. Lest you fail, lest you come short of entering into that race. In verse 3, for we which have believed do enter into rest. In verse 5, and in this place again, there were people that were not endeavoring and laboring, if they shall enter into my rest. Verse 6, seeing therefore it remained that some must enter it therein, and they to whom it was was preached entered not because of unbelief. In verse 10, for he that is entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works, and as God did from his. Verse 11 is telling us we have a part to play. Let us labor therefore to enter into that race. You see those important, two, two important words in a passage you are studying. The word rest and the word enter. 
ti a pe ni isin mi ati oro ti a pe ni wo lu mi as we look at the passage of scripture he combines the two words together and he talks about entering into his rest la ko jopo ni bi a tin ko ori yi papo wa wa ri pe osu oro mejeje papo wa so pe wo inu isin mi re in verse 1 again ni ese kini le kan let us therefore fear lest a promise been left us here are the words combined together of entering into his rest nitori na eje ki aberu bi ati fi ile ri oro na ni ti a wa so papo nisisin ati wo inu isin mi rest in verse 3 for we which have believed do combination of the words enter into rest ese keta nitori pe awa ti o ti gbagbo asopo oro na wa lo wa tele pe wo inu isin mi in verse 5 and in this place again if they shall the commission of the words enter into my rest ese ikarun ati nisisin yewe pe wa tun wa asopo na o won ki yo wo inu isin mi in verse 10 for he that is entered into his race. Eleven, let us therefore labor to enter into that rest. You will see very clearly therefore why we make the title of the study today entering into his rest. You see the apostle Paul here the writer of this epistle is making use of the experience of the children of Israel in entering into the promised land is making an application for the people of God in entering into the future race. Wa ri pe apostolic Olorun lo lati ko iwe yi o n fi apere igbe aye awon omo Israel ni wi wole Kenani si apere fun awon oni gbagbo odi oni lati wo inu isin mi re. Israel at the promise but many of them failed to enter in. Awon omo Israel ni ileri ileri sugbon opo ninu won lokuna lati wo nu re. They failed because of unbelief. Won kuna nitori we also have the promise to enter into the rest provided by God. Now when we talk about rest, as we look at this passage, there are six things we are talking about. Number one, the basic idea of rest is that you stop from walking or you stop any kind of action. No work, no activity, no action, no movement. You are completely at rest. That is resting. That's the one meaning of the rest we're looking at here is the rest of faith, is the rest of grace. That we have rested from all our self righteousness, all our religious labor, and by the grace of God, because of what Calvary has done, we enter into his righteousness. And we're now resting from our self righteousness, we rest in his righteousness. Eleni kan ninu isin mi ti a wa nso nipa re o je isin mi ti o ni ori ofe ninu o je isin mi ti o ni igbagbo ninu o je isin mi ti o n gba wa kuro ninu ilaala ododu are ni eleyi to je pe lai se laala tabi wa ala kankan a mu wa wonu ododo ti re ti o fi fun wa and that by the bible tells us we enter into that rest by faith bibeli sis je koye wa pe nipa igbagbo la won wonu isin mi na we who have believed as basri for we which have believed do enter into rest ni ese keta lo so pe nitori pe awa ti o ti gbagbo wonu isin mi jesus died for us on the cross of calvary jesus ku fun wa lori ide we believe that he has done it. Because of that faith, we do enter into rest. Because already had accomplished the work, he said it is finished. Because he has finished it, now we enter into salvation. What a glorious rest. 
Number two, write down the Bible verse for freedom from whatever worries or Number two, rest also means freedom from whatever worries or disturbs the mind. Before we knew the Lord, we were worried about future punishment. We are afraid of the perdition that will come upon the sinner. Now we are reconciled with God. There is no worry about eternal punishment. There is no anxiety about hellfire. We are peace with God. Our sins are forgiven. There is no fear of eternal judgment. There is rest in Christ. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Number three, rest means to lie down. It means to, to be settled. Before we knew the Lord, before we knew the will of the Lord, before we knew the word of God, we were up and on. We were searching in that religion, searching in that religion, searching in that religion. We could not rest, we could not be grounded, we could not be rooted, we could not be established. We were running about seeking for freedom. Eventually we came into the kingdom of God and we found the pearl of great price. We met the Lord Jesus Christ. Our sins were forgiven. Our burden was removed. The condemnation was taken away. We looked at Jesus Christ with joy. We embraced him. We said, this is what I've been searching for. We came to Calvary. Now we are staying there. We are lying down there. We are resting there. Now we are settled. We are established in Christ. We are no more running from religion to religion. We are no more running from denomination to denomination. We are established in Christ. We are rooted in Christ. We are grounded in Christ. We are unmovable in Christ. We are now free. We are no more being tossed about by every wind of doctrine. That is rest in Christ. And we who believe we have entered into that rest. Number four. To rest means to lean upon. When you, least, when you lean upon something, you are resting on something. You see, now we have come to Christ. We lean upon him. Assimilate. And we lean only upon the Lord, upon the God of Calvary. Glory, o Lua, o Lord, o Calvary, and for assimilate. the remainder of our lives, we are no more leaning upon an herbalist. We are no more leaning upon the arm of the flesh. We are no more resting or leaning our hope upon anyone. Our hope is built on nothing else and nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness. We now understand all other ground is sinking sand. And now we're leaning upon the Lord. What does that mean? My soul has found rest in him. And yet there is number five. It is the kingdom millennial rest. 
There is a millennial kingdom that is coming. And in that millennial kingdom, there is going to be rest and peace all over the world because Jesus Christ will reign wherever there is sun. And then number six, there is going to be the eternal rest in heaven. When the saints of God and the people of God will come to the everlasting eternal rest. In Revelation chapter 14. Revelation chapter 14, reading from verse 13. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right? Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, it says the Spirit that they may rest from their labor and their works do follow them. Everlasting eternal rest, unending rest in the very presence of the Lord Almighty in heaven. Ben me we can walk your list in a crony no la la one nin tori is a one tongue a lay a lay ni simiti only while I know to tia ye berry and that's the full rest the peaceful rest the sweet rest satisfying blessed rest in heaven forever a lay sinny simito jackie for Tony Allah piano no is a midi do so you see what we are studying today entering into his rest there are three points we are going to consider very quickly number one faith to enter God's rest number two failure to enter God's rest Number three, future rest for God's people. Let us look at number one. Face to enter God's rest. Before we come to know the Lord, there is no peace, there is no rest, says the Lord to the wicked. Then we heard the word of God that there is rest, there is peace in Christ. All our worry, all our anxiety, all our burden can be taken away through Christ. Our religion, our self righteousness has not given us rest, has not given us peace. Then we had the invitation of the Lord. He has invited everyone, come unto me, everyone that labor, and I and is heavy laden, and I will give you rest. It's said if we came to him that he will give rest to our soul. And then many of us who have come to know the Lord will believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And now there is peace and now there is rest. Running helter skelter, that is no more. Going to the mountain, going to the forest, going to the shrine, going to the valley, going to the riverside, looking for satisfaction, looking for something. All that has come to an end by faith we have entered into his rest. And yet, even though we have entered into that initial rest, there is still the eternal rest awaiting the believer. And he's talking to the believer, he says, let us endeavor, let us make sure that we do everything necessary to enter into that coming final eternal rest. Sorrow, you're going to go back, but we're a jackal, 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 a jackal
Hebrews chapter 4 verse 1 He says let us therefore fear Lest a promise being left us Of entering into his rest Any of you should seem to come short of it when you study the epistle to the Hebrews, there are some peculiar, peculiar things you must not overlook. You will find as you study the epistle to the Hebrews, the writer uses the words, let us. And immediately he says, let us, he gives you an exhortation, he gives you a commandment, he gives you something you ought to do, so that the benefit at the end of the let us will come to you. So that the benefit at the end of the let us will come to you. Look at verse 1. Let us therefore fear. Don't live a careless life. Let us fear. Look at verse 11. Let us labor. You see, whenever he says let us, it's about to tell you something, it's about to give you a commandment. Let us fear, let us labor therefore to enter into that trade. Look at chapter 4 verse 16 Let us again Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace It's an exhortation to prayer It's an exhortation to seeking help from the Lord In chapter 6 verse 1 Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection. Don't look back. Let us go on to perfection. Don't become lukewarm and cold. Don't stay where you are. Move on. Let us go on to perfection. Don't justify your imperfection or sin or weakness in your life. Leave that thing aside. Let us move on. Go on to perfection. Chapter 10 of Hebrews verse 22. Remember again, whenever it is let us, it's about to give you a commandment and exhortation. It was 22, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Draw near to God. Don't draw back. Don't be reserved. Don't keep quiet. I don't say I don't want to go too far. Let us draw near. In verse 23, let us hold fast. There is a devil that wants to blow the thing or knock that eternal life out of you and hold it fast. He wants to substitute, he wants to give you a substitute, he wants to give you the world and take Jesus Christ and take eternal life away from you. Let us hold fast. He wants to give you false doctrine and take away from your hands sound doctrine. Let us hold fast. In verse 24, and let us consider. Let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. 
Ajeke Ayarawa wo lati ru arawa si ife ati si ise rere Chapter 12 and verse 1 Yes orikeji la ese ikini We are foreseen us we also are compassed about with so great a cloud a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight Nitori na bi ati fi awo samati okun to bayi fun awon eleri yi wa ka let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. He has not finished and let us run. Don't stand, let us run. Don't go back, let us run. Don't be tired, let let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Chapter 13, verse 13. Let us go forth, therefore, unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach. Now, can you see we are talking about entering into his race? And, and we have something that is active, powerful, mighty that we're going to do. You're not just going to fold your hand and say, Well, bye and bye. When the kingdom comes, I will enter. It says, Let us, let us, let us. There is something for you to do. And what you Look at it from chapter 4 verse 1 again. Let us therefore fear. You know the people that say it's eternal security, whatever you do, whatever you don't do, you will enter into the kingdom of God by and by. There is no fear for them. They feel that whatever happens, whatever they don't do, even if they are living in sin, even if they backslide, they feel they will still enter. It is not true. Let us fear, lest a promise be left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. Oh, wow. In verse 2, for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. We are not the first group of people to hear the gospel. Others have heard the gospel before us. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. Have you heard the gospel? That's not enough. What are you doing about the gospel you have heard? In verse 2, but the word preached did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that had it. There are many of us that feel that only hearing the word is what will come for in the church. It is not enough to hear. You must take that word, swallow it, believe it, accept it, meditate on it, consider it, apply it to yourself, believe it, get on your knees and pray, and mix that word with everything within you, so that the word will affect your heart, affect your mind, affect your brain, affect your actions, affect everything in your life. 
so that you are, you are saturated with the word you are enveloped in the word you are leaning upon the word you are trusting in the word you believe the word you are walking by the word you live you exist by that word that cannot happen except you pray in the word of God after hearing the word of God you see we are talking about revival we are talking about the word of God changing our lives do you know that many of our leaders many of our coordinators that are saying we need revival we need revival they are hindering the revival after a bible study like this when we need to take the word of God to the Lord in prayer and pray it in and pray it in and pray it in there will be a coordinator that will stay in the district and be making announcements and be talking about another thing even reading some bible and talking about a charity talking about project and talking about building and many of the people that hear the word the fire of the word still burning in them after all those announcements and everything everything will cool down and the people go back home without any change without any transformation many of our leaders and coordinators are hindering people from entering into his race entering into his salvation entering into the sanctification experience and then we coordinators we turn around we say there is no revival the word of god is there and it's a bringing something in the heart that's fire that's why there's a desire to want to consecrate and give our lives to the lord but you coordinators will not allow us to pray you are hindering us from entering in and if we don't enter and if we don't get to heaven many of the coordinators too will not enter because our blood will be required in your hand But the word preach did not profit them. It's like the sword that went for to sow. And some fell by the wayside. And some fell on the rocky places. And some fell among the thorns. There was nothing wrong with the seed of the word of God. But because of the cares of life. Because of the difficulties of life. All those things choke the word and the word not being mixed with faith in them that had it it had no profit for anyone do you see why the lives of the interpreters our interpreters in our church here do you see why their life does not conform to the word of God immediately we finish the uh, message of the word of God they finish the interpretation from all the places where they are interpreting over there even if they open the door and they go out they do not pray they do not sink in the word of God they do not swallow the word of God they do not soak themselves in the word of God they do not saturate themselves in the word of God they say well we have been interpreted only interpretation they came to do many of our interpreters if they are not careful they will spend eternity in hell fire the word is not mixed with faith in their heart upon in our team so go for for what not yet pay me back in that you want about your party to see you go for water nigga that you're about you are so or not i don't want to say tomorrow if one way in here 
won yo kan jade koni si aye lati gbadura won koni gbadura lati je ki oro na ko da po mo igbagbo ninu okan won won akan ro ninu ara won wi pe se ni awa kan wa lati wa se ituma tabi ogbufo fun eni to wa wa su won o ni gbadura opo ninu awon ogbufo wa ni won yo lu aye raye won ni orun apadi nitori pe oro na da po mo igbagbo ninu won i need to be direct i'm your pastor and i need to tell you the truth many of our electronics people and many of the people that are doing the recording here are going doing your recording that's important and many of our ushers that are working do you see why the real life and the life of holiness the life of purity and the life of the word that we're preaching does not reflect in their lives because you see during the meeting they listen to part of the word they hear part of the word they do not hear part of the word and immediately we finish the preaching they pack all their equipment and all the ushers pack all their things no prayer and the word is not means we face in them that are hearing the word and you're wondering we're preaching holiness we're preaching sound doctrine why is it our ushers are fighting why is it our people that are doing other kinds of work they are, the word is not reflected in their life it is not just hearing the word the word must mix with faith in them hearing the word opolopo awon ti won ran wa lowo lati go on wa so afefe ati awon ti won ran wa lowo lati ma ya awuran ninu ijo ise ti en se dara etes wa lati ma se sugban lati so eleyi fun yin wi pe opolopo ninu awon asona ati awon ti won ran wa lowo lati sise kan tabi omiran idi ti igbe aye won ko se ni iba mo pelu oro ti won ngo ni pe ni gere ti a ba ti pari ohun gbogbo won a pa le won mo won keru won ko saye fun adura ko si aye lati wa oju oluwa idi ni yan to fi je pe o mo nya wa lerun ti a mo nbere pe ki lode ti awon asona wa ti atori ti won nja o n to sokun fa re ni pe nigba ti won o gbadura oro na ko da pon mo igbagbo ninu okan won you see it needs space when we hear the word of god we receive it as the word of god we allow that word to mix with faith in our heart then by the grace of god that word will produce effect and influence and impact in our lives nitori na ni lo igbagbo nigba ki igba ti a ba gbo oro olorun a fi aye gba oro olorun yi lati dapo mo igbagbo ninu okan wa nigba to ba dapo mo igbagbo a so eso a ni pa iye biye ninu aye wa in verse 3 for we which have believed do enter into rest ni ese iketa nitori pe awa ti o ti gbagbo wo inu isi only those To believe we which have believed will do enter into rest ikia want to bag bag on you not only those who listen you have to listen before you know what to pray about but not only those who listen the word must mix with faith and consecration and commitment and surrender in your life when that has happened and you totally and fully believe the lord it will be a fruit in your life you will enter into rest <laughs> As he said in verse 3, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest. Although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. That means then faith is very important faith is very necessary in hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 hebrews 11 verse 6 but without faith it is impossible to please him we must have faith in the lord before we can please the lord we receive the word of god by faith we believe the complete word of god for without faith it's impossible to please him for he that cometh to god must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him nitori eni ti o ba nto olorun wa ko le sa igbagbo pe o nbe 
ati pe on ni oluse san fun awon ti o fi alabale wa it is one thing to hear the word of god it's another thing after hearing the word of god to diligently seek him o nkan ni lati gbo oro olorun sugbon leyin bi gbo oro olorun o nkan tun ni ki afi arabale wa olorun in first thessalonians chapter 2 verse 13 ninu thessalonica kin ni ori keje ese iketa you see the attitude here and that makes us to be able to have the benefit from the word of god wari wa sini ti o nje ki ani anfani oro olorun in first thessalonians 2 verse 13 thessalonica kin ni ori keje ese iketa la for this cause also thank we god without ceasing because when you received the word of god which he had of us you received it not as the word of men but as it is in truth the word of god which effectually worketh also in you but listen to the next two words in you that believe nitori eyi le awa se ndupe lowo olorun pelu le aisin mi pe nigba ti eyin gba oro ti eyin gbo lodo wa ani oro olorun eyin ko gba bi eni pe oro eniyan sugbon gege bi o ti je ni otito bi oro olorun eyi ti o si se gidigidi ninu eyin tetisele yi o You see, when you have the attitude of making fun of the word of God, it will never be a fruit in your life. O je ma pe to ba je pe o wa si ti re ni pe ko ma fi oro Olorun se fe ko ni ni ba ni wa ye re. And as the pastor's idea. Eh, iro to lu su agotan ni. As what they think. Eh, o ta won ro ni. The word of God will never benefit you in that reaction. Oro Olorun o le si o ni re ni iwa be. But you see when they had the word, they didn't take it as a word of men. They took it as a watch of god ori wa si won ni pe nigbati won gbo oro olorun won o gba gege bi oro eniyan sugba gege bi oro olorun they took it as if god stood in their in their front and then he told them directly his word coming from the throne of glory if you receive the word of god like that it will be a fruit in your life won gba oro na gege bi eni pe olorun duro ni waju won ti o si mu oro na to won wa lati ite ogo re wa ti won na ba gba oro na be ase afani fun aye it says it worketh effectually o tun wa so pe o si se gidigidi in the people that believe ni no awon ti o gbagbo yes that's what we need we need that faith before we can enter into that trade o je mo pe un ta ni lo ni a ni lo igbagbo e ka to wonu isin mi re it is by faith we get saved ni pa igbagbo la se ngba wa la by faith our hearts are purified ni pa igbagbo la so kan wa di by faith we have power in the holy ghost ni pa igbagbo ni alagbara ninu emi mi mo by faith we are able to receive answers to our prayers ni pa igbagbo la se ngba e dan si adura wa by faith we endure ni pa igbagbo Gola se nfa ya ran And it is by faith we are going to be able to enter into heaven Ni pa igbagbo kan na la o fe wo run In Romans chapter 5 verse 1 Ninu ro mo ri ka run ese ikini Therefore be justified by faith we are peace with God peace of mind rest in our soul we have peace we go through our lord jesus christ nje bi a tin da wa lare ni pa igbagbo awa ni alaafia lord olorun iyin alaafia ninu okan wa nipa oluwa wa jesu christ as the apostle talks about entering into the rest he then warns us of the people that failed to enter into rest gege bi apostle se ngba wa ni yanju nipa we were inu isin mi re o wa kilo fun wa ni pa won to kuna lati wonu isin mi na and it says all the reason why they were not able to enter into Israel o si so edi ti won se wonu isin mi re fun wa that leads us to point you elei lo mu a lo si koko keji failure to enter god's rest ifuna lati wonu isin mi olorun remember there is rest we enter today by faith ran ti pe isin mi kan wa ti awon onu re loni nipa igbagbo remember that we rest from self righteousness ran ti pe ati bo lowo ododo ara eni Remember we rest from worry and anxiety and fear of judgment to come. Ati pe ati bo lowo ieru idajo ti nbo ni ojo e wa ju. Remember we rest in the Lord we no more running to and fro uh, we not be moved by every wind of doctrine not running from religion to religion we rest in the Lord. Ati pe ni bayi ati sin mi ninu Oluwa a o ma tinu esin kan bo sinu esin miran 
Remember, rest means were leaning upon him completely. And remember the future aspect of that rest, the kingdom rests in the millennium and the eternal rest in heaven. There were people in the Old Testament time that failed to rest or to fail to enter to the land of Canaan. In fact, they provoked God so much, God swore that they will not enter into his rest. There are many people today that are hearing about rest in salvation, salvation in Christ. I will give you rest. And they fail to enter into salvation. There is a richer, deeper rest, peace of mind in sanctification. There are many people that have heard about it. They fail to enter into that sanctifying rest. In fact, there is a kind of rest in the Holy Ghost baptism. By that Holy Ghost baptism, it gives us rest, renewal, revival, and refreshing. The thing we have been laboring for and sweating for before, the power of the Holy Ghost in our lives is the one that does it, and we do it without sweating and will rest in the Lord. There are many Evangelism becomes easy. Preaching the gospel becomes easy. It is like we can preach so much to so many people at different times and the bus and the bus stop everywhere and yet there is no anxiety, there is no tiredness. It's like we are resting in the power of the Holy Ghost. There is a rest of faith. You see, there is a mountain there. There is a sickness there. There is a torment there. There is an oppression there. And there is no worry, there is no anxiety. Your mind is resting because of the rest of faith. You know that all it takes is to stand up and command that mountain and the mountain will move. You believe the word of God that God's word will never fail. And because of that, there is no tormenting fear. There is no tormenting anxiety. There is no worry that is making you run elter-skelter. You are believing the Lord with all your heart. You have rested from the fear of tomorrow. You have rested from the fear of enemies. You have rested from the fear of curse and bad law. You are completely resting in the arms of the Lord. There are people that are hearing all about the rest of faith and they do not enter in. That's what we're looking at in point number two. Failure to enter God's rest. Looking at it from verse four. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. That is, there is a kind of work he did for those six days, and on the seventh day, he rested. 
Oh yes, he's still walking. But the work he's doing now is different from the work he did in those days of creation. There is maintenance, sustaining work now, but at that time there was creative work. He said now, everyone should bear and should reproduce after its kind. And he's supervising that, he's maintaining that, he's sustaining that. But at that time, there was no kind, there was nothing at all. He had to create force. And in those days of creation, he worked. Then he ended that work, and all that remains now is sustaining what is going on, and the rest is producing after its kind. He did rest on the seventh day. In verse 5. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest. He was telling the children of Israel, there's another rest in the land of Canaan waiting for them. He rests where the Egyptians will not be able to pursue them anymore. A rest where they will not be looking for water and there was no water to drink. A rest when they were always on the move in the wilderness, walking, 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 walking never arriving. A rest that brings to an end the wilderness wandering and the wilderness journey. If they shall enter into my rest. In Basil, seeing therefore, it remained that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. Those children of Israel, the Lord wanted them to get to the land of Canaan. When God called Moses, He told him to take the whole nation, all the men and the women and the young people, to the land He has promised unto their fathers. They to whom it was first preached entered not in. Because of unbelief. They said, We are not able. The giants are there. We are like grasshoppers. They were seen difficulty. They didn't see the Almighty God. In verse 7 again, he limited a certain day, saying in David in his arms, Today, after so long a time, as it is said today, if ye will hear his voice, had he not your heart. Yes, I KJ away. On your jokan, oh winning no way, David Loni, Lenny back with pe bear, beauty winning side you loni be any bag bone. David the psalmist was telling the children of Israel in his own generation you see our forefathers they should have entered in they could not enter in because of unbelief then he warned them you be very careful that now the promise of God to enter into the spiritual rest you also will fail through the same manner of unbelief and the hardening of the heart David the Lord said to the Lord the Israel they were not able to enter because of unbelief. In chapter 3 of Hebrews, chapter verse 12. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. 
ki okan buburu ti a igbagbo ki o ma se wa ki o ma se wa ninu enikeni ninu oyin ni li lo kuro lodo olorun ala is reminding us we too we have the promise of entering in o ran wa le ti pe awa papa ni ile ri aduwo ni the privilege of entering in and fani we wonu le in my father saw so many mansions ninu ile baba mi opo ibebe lo wa ni be go to prepare a place for you emi lo pese aye sile fun yin although that promise has been given to you and to me o to ni a ti fi ile ri yen fun wa ti emi na take heed lest there be in any of you and even Heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Eke sara ki o kan buburu ti a igbagbo ki o ma se wa ni nu eni keni ni nu oyin ni li lo kuro lo do lorun ala yi. In verse 18. Ni ese ikeji ni. And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but they that believe not. Awon ta li o si bura fun pe won ki yo wo inu isin mi ohun bi ko se fun I want to go gone. But please remember, they believed originally. When the Lord told them each family to take a land. And to kill that land. And to apply the blood of the animal. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. They believed. They did what the Lord said. And the judgment of death passed over them. Remember, at the beginning, when Moses said, "Up, oh, let us go." Moses They believed, and they rose away from Egypt. And they started the Canaan journey. More than six hundred thousand men, and then the women, and then the children. They believed, and therefore they were saved. Therefore they were redeemed. They were blood, but they were bought by the blood of the Lamb. And they were the peculiar people of God. And then they even promised God, they said, everything you have told us that we will do. That's like you and me. We had the word of salvation. We believe. We repent. We embrace the Lord. We had the joy of salvation. We even consecrated our lives to the Lord. We became the peculiar people of God. But, but remember, of those children of Israel, the time of difficulty came. The difficulty will test your consecration. And then they began to remember Egypt. In their mind, they turned back. And then verbally, openly, publicly, they said they wanted to go back to Egypt. The people that respected Moses before, that believed Moses before, that sang the song of salvation before. Can you imagine those same people, they wanted to stone Moses? Moses and Aaron. And Moses had to fall upon his face. The people that God said, let my people go to serve me. And he loved them. God now said, I will desire them. And I will make you a greater nation than they. He said, the people that sinned against me, I will wash up their name, I wipe up their name, I will Drop their name, take their name out of my book that I've written. Oluwa wa soni ni bino repi eni keni tio basi on 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 paru korere on paru korere kuo nu weti on diko. Eventually, God said they will not enter to the into that promised land. Nigo wa ya olorun wa so kwe mo ni dey le isi. In chapter three, verse nineteen. Ni ori kete se koko de lo. So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. They backslid to the point where God determined and decided that they will not enter. Do you know it can so happen to somebody like that? That already you have been born again. Already you have been saved. 
And now you begin to turn away in your mind. Turning away from the Lord. And reaching after the things that will not profit. In fact, a person can backslide. And so backslide to the point of apostasy. That the Lord will abandon such an individual to a strong delusion to now believe a lie. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 reading from verse 9 even him who's coming is after the walking of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. The spirit of the Antichrist already walking in the world. That's what the Bible says here very clearly. And it talks of power, it talks of signs, it talks of lying wonders. Do you know there are people that are forsaking the God of their salvation and they are running after lying wonders? And they say, holiness oh, is no more their business. They say, sanctification is no more important to them. They were looking for power, signs, and wonders. In verse 10, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. Because they received not the love of the truth. That they might be saved. You see, there are many people in some places of worship. They do not have the love of the truth, the truth of salvation, the truth of the grace of God, the truth of a new life, the truth of becoming a new creature, that they might be saved. All they're looking for is power, signs, wonder in fact it's very unfortunate there are people that have been in this same church in this same deep life before one still reason or the other they left and they started a new ministry there's nothing wrong with that if that's the will of God but the point that uh, we're making is when they start that new ministry in order to want many many people to come a crowd to come all they are talking about power signs miracle no salvation no change of life no holiness no separation from worldliness that's the dangerous terrible thing and the lord may leave such people in such a situation and if a person continues like that he is now under a strong delusion there's no salvation there's no sanctification and all the people that are rushing there there is no change of life all they're doing is just praying and fasting and doing whatever it is for signs and power and lying wonder that's perdition. <laughs> If you are like that, here you are, you are still in the church today, and you are looking outside the fence, and you are saying, maybe I will go, maybe I will go, if you are not careful, God may send a strong delusion to you that you should believe a lie. Wipe him, mon wabara, mon wabara, mon wabita barawa. 
ti o ko ba ki sara Olorun le fi e mi etan fun e ko wa ma gba ike go Look at verse 11 and verse 12 all together for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they shall believe a lie that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness Ye ka wa ke se ko kan lati keji la papo ati ni tori eyi Olorun ran o tin si se sinan si won ki won ki o le gba ike gbo ki a le se dajo gbogbo awon ti ko gba otito gbo sugbon ti won ni inu didun ninu aisododo You see there it's very important that you love the truth O wa ri ni pe o se pataki ko feran otito But to see the people were reading about the children of Israel and the many people who are following after that same way today they fail to enter into the rest provided by God because of unbelief O ri awon omo Israel ti an kan ni pa won ati awon ton to ipa se won lodi oni Let's now go to point number three. The future rest for God's people. Future rest for God's people. Reading from verse 8. For if Jesus had given them rest. Now in the English Bible you see that word Jesus. Uh, it's because the, um, uh, the New Testament was written in Greek. And in the Greek language, the word Joshua in Greek means Jesus. Jehovah saves. It says that Joshua had given the children of Israel rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? But in verse 9, there remains therefore a rest to the people of God. Where the people of God, and yet there remains a rest. We are visited Calvary, we are resting in Calvary, and yet there remains a rest. We have met Jesus, we are born again. He has Giving rest to our soul, and yet there remains a rest. As you back Christi Pade, Otiwa Pisi me fun akawa sugmasi be si be si me kaku funwa. We have met Jesus Christ, the very fountain of life and the very giver of salvation. We are no more running about from religion to religion, congregation to congregation, doctrine to doctrine. We are no more running elter skelter. We have met Him. We are embracing Him. We are sitting by His feet. He is teaching us. We are listening to Him. We are leaning upon him, we are resting in him, and yet there remains a rest to the people of God. At Christi Pade, and it is your reason ye, and it is for one new Julo Waybala, our Martin Nuesican, Bossy Nuesimiran, our Martin Nee, Jocan, Bossy Nee, Jomiran, at the back Pade, Otifidi Wakale, our not is simile, at the Becker Wale, I Becker Lewa, and no less, but Sibe Sibe. We have met Jesus the miracle worker. We have met Jesus the great physician. We have met Jesus the great deliverer. We are no more running to the mountain, running to the valley looking for deliverance because Jesus Christ in us is a mighty deliverer. We are no more running to Egypt. We are no more looking for deliverance from the oppression. We're no more drinking concoction, drinking urine, drinking all those things that the Abalis are recommending. We have met the Lord who is the deliverer of our soul. He has given us rest in our body, in our soul, in our mind, in our spirit, in our family. And yet there remains a rest future to the people of God. Nibba 
ni bayi awa ti ba pade isin mi wa ninu ebi wa isin mi wa ninu okan wa isin wa ni gbogbo aye ka wa sugbon sibe sibe isin mi kan si wa ni ojo e waju to nduro di awon eniyan olorun it must send for he that is entered into his rest ni ese ke wa nitori pe eni ti o ba wo sinu isin mi re question is have you entered into that rest ni bere na wa ni pe o wa ti wonu isin mi no self righteousness my my righteousness is in him ko si pe ododo are ni mo ododo mi ninu re lo wa and no more searching in the books of religious people maybe i will get something there to the books of philosophy of you know we have entered into his rest ah o ma la kaka bayi lati ma wa ni iwe esin awon eniyan tabi iwe ti awon eniyan fi ogbo ori won ko boya le ri isin mi rara o ati wonu isin mi re he also sees from his own words as god did from his on pelu si sin mi kuro ninu ise ti re gege bi olorun ti sin mi kuro ninu ise no more the work of self righteousness the work of philosophy the work of uh, transcendent Mental meditation that has given us rest. No, 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 not philosophy. It is rest in Christ Jesus, the son, the founder of the Christian faith, and the giver of salvation. He was say, "Is it me that being can't hear any new words? Can tabi ninu awon nkan ti eniyan fi ogbo ori ko tabi ninu itan adaye ba ti awon eyan ro pe boya yen lo fun wa nisin mi rararara o isin mi wa ninu jesu oluda sile ijo re and yet there is a glorious rest awaiting the people of god sugba o isin mi ologo kan tun do di awon eyan lo there is an eternal rest awaiting the people of god isin mi aye raye nro di awon eyan lo when god will wipe all the tears away nigba ti olorun yo nu gbogbo when we will sit on the throne with jesus christ When we will sing with the angels and the redeemed of all generations. When we will drink of the water of life flowing by the by the throne of God. When we will rise in the bosom of God in the bosom of Abraham. There is a rest awaiting the people of God. When there will not be a devil that is chasing you. There will not be a sickness tormenting your body there will not be a problem that you are trying to solve there will not be a mountain you are trying to remove there will not be a need you are trying to meet there is a rest eternal rest and perfect rest and perfect fellowship awaiting the people of God a place of no anxiety a place of no worry a place of no labor a place of no difficulty a place of no trouble a place where the devil where the demons where all the all the agents of the devil cannot operate a place where everything will be done in the very presence of God and there will be joy that is not measurable there will be peace that is not measurable There will be the rest of soul and the rest of mind that is eternal. There will be the final and the full and the eternal leaning upon the bosom of Jesus Christ. Everlasting rest. Verse eleven. Let us labor therefore. We have not got in there yet. Let us labor therefore. There are temptations to overcome to. Today, let us labor therefore. There is a work we need to do for the Lord now. Let us labor therefore. There are things we need to endure. He that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. Let us labor therefore. The devil may be trying to sift you, wanting to invite you, wanting to entice you, wanting to take you back into the world. Ah, let us. Labor therefore. Let us labor therefore to enter into that trade. Lest 
any man. Moses or Aaron, lest any man. Elders in the land of Israel, lest any man. Men, strong men of the 600,000 people, lest any man. Workers and leaders, men and women in the church, lest any man. All the people who are born again, the children of God, lest any man fall after the same manner, after the same example of unbelief. That new kingdom is about to come now. God is preparing a kingdom for his people. Will you be there? I said, will you be there? In Revelation chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21. I'm reading from verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. In, in verse 4, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death neither sorrow nor crying neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away and he that sat upon the throne said behold I make all things new and he said unto me right for these words are true and faithful and, and he said unto me it is done I am Alpha and Omega the beginning and the end I will give unto him that satters of the fountain of the water of life freely he that overcome shall inherit all things and I will be his God and he shall be my son that's the rest that's the peace that's the future reward waiting for the people that endure to the end let, let us, us labor therefore to enter into that rest let's rise up and pray that we will not hear the word of God in vain you have heard many people people had in the past. It was not mixed with faith in them that heard. Because of that, they couldn't enter in. Will you enter in? You talk to the Lord in prayer. Let nothing hinder you. Let nothing disturb you. Let there be no announcement in the district. Let no coordinator come now and disturb us from praying. Don't let people miss their salvation. Don't let people miss the eternal rest in the Lord. You seek the Lord while he may be found. Call your opponent while he's near. If you have not entered into that rest, come to the Lord right now. Come unto me, all ye that labor on a heavy lady. And I will give you rest. He will forgive your sin. He will cleanse you from iniquity. He will remove the self-righteousness. He will bring you to peace with God. He will give you peace in your soul. He will give you rest in your mind. He will give you true salvation. He will bring you into that salvation that gives your soul rest. Have you entered into that rest? Oh, what you want me now? How about the rest of sanctification? When the Adamic nature is no more pulling trouble with you. When the, when the Adamic nature is already uprooted. Peace within. 
the deep peace of God flowing like a river when the stubbornness of the human nature is no more troubling you when the self will of the human nature is no more troubling you when I say rest a spiritual rest in your soul the rest of the power of the Holy Ghost when you are no more sweating to do it in your own power not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And then you serve the Lord not in your own power, but in the power of the Holy Ghost. And there is a rest in the Holy Ghost, a refreshing in the Holy Ghost, a renewal in the Holy Ghost. Have you got that rest in the Holy Ghost? Have you entered into that rest? There is a rest of faith. When you are no more tormented by fear, you are no more running to the synagogue and running to the mountain of fire and running to the valley of uh, water and running anywhere. You are established, you are grounded, and you are settled. When you are no more running to our and running to occultic people and running to people of lying wonders. You are settled in Christ. Have you entered into that trade? <laughs> You are no more going from village to village looking for concoction. You are no more running from religion to religion looking for deliverance. You rest in Christ. You rest where Christ. You rest at the feet of Christ in Calvary. You enter into his rest. Are you tormented by fear? Tormented by worry and anxiety? Why don't you come into Christ and rest in Christ? Come into Christ and rest in Christ. Come into Christ and rest in Christ. And now there is another rest awaiting the people of God. Kingdom rest. Kingdom rest. Kingdom rest. There is a kingdom rest awaiting the people of God. And there is an eternal rest awaiting the people of God. Let us labor to enter in.